on our live chat today to tell you a little bit about our twin flame journey story. And it's 1111 is the portal of our very sacred activation and, and our, our twin flame journey, our remembrance of that started on one, one and the evening of one, one, which was the 2nd of January of 2021. So it's really appropriate that we tell our story on 1111. So the ones are all about activation and, and a sacred connection to divine and divine timing and perfection. And so we really feel like a lot of you have wondered what's going on. Like, what's the deal? Why, why is all this happening? Where, what is, what is the deal? So we have Autumn on audio joining us. Um, she is in our yoga for love training program. She's one of our directors and our teacher training and our online coursing courses, as well as a dear friend and soul sister and Reiki master. So Autumn, we're going to let you kind of lead a little bit of an interview style so we can get this conversation rolling. But first, um, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Isla. My uh, given name is Lisa. And uh, I am an, a Reiki master teacher. My divine work in this world is to bring the light of Christ in the Sophia form through the goddess and the all, all of her forms, specifically being called and activated through the goddess Isis. And so that's, uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, and I'm Takata. Uh, Jamie is my birth name. And um, well, and let me throw in that Ray is my last name. And so I also have this deep connection with Ra. So Isis and Ra. <laughs> that is a thing. Um, for the millennia. I, yeah, for the millennia, exactly. <laughs> um, I have been a DJ, DJ Sunray, for a long, long time now, since uh, 94 um and then working in the healing arts for the last 20 years um and doing life coaching um holding ceremonies and retreats and playing music playing music she playing plays all kinds of instruments specifically for percussion yeah yeah and i have um called in my medicine drum as of 2020 and always wanted to drum and realized that i've drummed for a lot of lifetimes um, through sacred chant and through prayer and meditation through sacrament and ceremony as the, the drumming that I do is I bring it through at the channel so the drum really plays me and uh, so you want to start back in January well Autumn what do you, you want to lead um, a question you had you had start with the question that you want to lead with so what is that where or when and where did you guys meet? Okay, that's a really good question. When and where do we meet? We actually don't remember that's the in this we, life. We don't remember. Uh, we don't remember for certain. We've always it, been like in the, each other's circles. Like right. there, we, I've always I've known about her for um, since at least 2011. Yeah. Um, when I first opened my first yoga studio, Dynamic Yoga for Love in Red Oak, Texas. And I knew that she was doing similar practices. There were several women within our tribes that would kind of cross over to some of the events I was doing and some of the things that she was doing. It was before she opened her studio space, but we had we had been sitting in ceremony um, through with the same circle of women, but not together and right. in a plant medicine ceremony. So, yeah, so, so our, our circles were overlapping. A lot of the um, same close friends, et cetera, but we actually didn't know each other. We knew, we knew of, each, of other. each other. And I don't even know exactly when you came into my awareness other than you just. I know that did. I went to your studio <laughs> space when you opened that. And that, that was, was in, in 2014. Yeah. I visited and did a, a class or workshop in her studio, which is, that's the year you opened, right? In 2014. Yeah. Yes. And then that's also coincidentally the year that my studio was coming to a close after a major house fire. And I was told to shut down my brick and mortar studio and focus on my teacher training and really, really focus on my home and my foundation. I was working very, very closely with Kali Ma 
if any of you know who have been through massive chaos, destruction, especially in the form of fire, Kali is the governing energy of chaos. And also she's the, the, the destroyer and also the birth giver. And as is Pele, which is kind of circling back to both of our stories with Hawaii. But um, I was working very closely with Pele <laughs> so and in, in this chaos space. <laughs> But I was holding space for my online training, which was birthed through that process because I was closing my studio and I, I wanted a place to continue to hold my trainings. And that was before like Zoom or anything that we actually recorded all of my first beta set of yoga trainings from my manual um, with the uh, Google Hangouts, if you all remember that. So it sounds like so antiquated now. <laughs> but so then that's when our, our tribes were kind of cross pollinating. And I was holding plant medicine ceremony on my sacred land with this circle of women since 2011. So for 10 years, I'd been holding ceremony, um, but we had never sat together. So yeah, there was a, the holistic festival we were doing that started what in 2016, where we started. Maybe. Yeah. Right there was a, then we would have booths little... that would be placed next to each other in the holistic we kept, festival. Yeah. We kept so getting... I know that we met there. Neighbor. Mm -hmm. at the holistic festivals and and my table would be next to hers and then i would show up the next time and it was like oh hey <laughs> yeah and so we'd like have a chance to visit but it was always busy and we had different members of our tribes that were kind of hanging at my table hanging out at her table hanging at our booths but we were constantly talking to people being at a festival and i was teaching um so you know i, I was just super focused and so finally after a couple times of that happening we wanted yeah, to was, talk more and was it 2019 yeah it was 2019 the summer of 2019 summer solstice as a matter of fact which was literally a year after my book i did my book launch um so my book yoga for love tools for mind body spirit for a holistic lifestyle was launched through the birth of the fire and through the need to have a, a manual for my online training and that was literally a year previous to the year that we met in person and actually like intentionally um, sat down together. And that was, so this was summer of 2018. My book was launched summer of 2019. We went to Java Juice after the Holistic Festival. Yes. Um, to just have a quick smoothie, yes. um, which turned into closing down like the restaurant. A four hour conversation. <laughs> it felt were, like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, we were taking our family's smoothies home and they were They're all melted. melted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the melted smoothies, guys. We just got into conversation. But even then, it was completely platonic. Everything was completely platonic. Absolutely. To answer just... your question, it is not platonic. We are you know, we are cosmic lovers. We are, you know, life Anymore. partners. Yeah, yeah yes. not at this point. Obviously, after this year, 2021, things shifted. We're going to get to how that shifted and what happened because it really wasn't even an intentional thing. Yeah. Um, we are both completely blind. And so we just hung out and then like at the holistic festival. Well, let me do a little bit of backstory as well. So in 2011, um, while she was also sitting with the same people in ceremony, I had, had um, attended a ceremony in uh, an Aya ceremony and it through a series of magical events had been you know, synchronized and led to this one moment. And I sat in a three day ceremony and on the very first night of that ceremony, I was witnessing the, uh, the maestro playing his instruments throughout the ceremony. And um, I, I realized later that, you know, the, the medicine didn't hit me really hard the first night. Um, and it was so that I could be witness to the ceremony and actually observe it from a place of kind of in between both worlds. Um, and that's when I was, you know, I, I witnessed him playing and it was just something in me that was just like this, this is like DJing a ceremony with sacred instruments. <laughs> a whole and other this level. Is, this, like, I feel this in, my being and my soul like this is what i'm being called to do and i in fact i was told by the medicine to go and collect the instruments that this was part of my path um and then i continued on um you know it was a beautiful three days lots of 
lots to that story. We won't dive into that, but I went on with that mission knowing that I was to collect the instruments. And then through a series of other ceremonies that I sat in, I reached this point where three different ceremonies, three different plants, I kept getting the same message that I needed to stop journeying with the plants actually and do the work here. And that actually was part of the process that led me to opening my studio and opening Divine Sight Healing Art Center. And so I spent the next six years running that. Um, I was told in that process that I would know when it was time to return to the medicine that I would, I would have a clear um, call to come back. So, so yeah, she was being invited to all the ceremonies that were being hosted that on my she was land, doing, and but I she was, was like, told no. I was told not to do this right <laughs> now, so I never attended any of these ceremonies, ironically. But when, Which was perfect because the medicine is what opened that door for us. Right. So that was not meant to happen. It was like all divinely ordained, not but, meant to sit. Right, but right around the time in which we had our holistic festival slash Jamba Juice conversation, uh, right in that time frame is when I started to hear the call to come back to the medicine and, and start working. And, and I was just getting, you know, just start preparing yourself. It's coming. When it's right timing, you'll know, but it's, it's coming. Just know that you're being called back. And so when we sat... I was also being called to um, start DJing again. You know, was, I hadn't been really playing and in, in, in DJing anywhere. So, um, you know, it was a single mom working, running a business. It was kind of hard to also be the DJ in, in that whole thing. But I was really getting the message that it was time for me to move back that direction. And so we were sitting, having our Jamba Juice, and I, I shared uh, – you know, I'm really feeling called to come back and, and start DJing. You know, when I was I like, ah, gigs, she was, she was like, DJ, like, no way. So <laughs> first of all, that's cool because everybody loves to DJ, right? But second of all, I was like, okay, we totally need a DJ for the festival that I'm planning. And I had been doing, this was the 14th annual DFW free day of yoga. And I was the president of the organization. Um, I've been with the board since the inception year and, um, I've volunteered for that organization as a nonprofit for years and years. And it was the, the largest uh, round robin yoga class in Texas. And we always did like a really amazing group of the top yoga teachers from all over Texas and Dallas, Fort Worth. And we'd hold it in downtown Dallas and we'd have a DJ play the set while we did our flows. And each person would have like 10 minutes and we'd have like 10 teachers or seven to 10 teachers. And then we'd have yoga classes and vendors and stuff all day long. And that year I was like, okay, we need, we need a new vibe for this. You know, I'm really bringing this more shamanic vibe. I felt really more called to sit in the medicine. I was told not to sit in the medicine at all in 2019. So I actually closed down the sisterhood circle that I was hosting. And I said, I'm not going to host this anymore. I need to just sit in my own space. And so this was the year after my book released. I had spent that whole year like writing and I was just really um, feeling into my teacher training, hosting, you know, these festivals, um, connecting with my tribe. And I wasn't sitting in the medicine until um, I was called to sit in com with Combo on winter solstice of 2019. But that's not even psychedelic. Um, so I was like, okay, this is time to really bring this festival to another level, bring it to more of a shamanic vibe because I was really feeling like it was getting to be too much of like a marketing event and not enough meat and substance, you know, if you will. And so she's like, yeah, like the kind, well, how do you describe your DJ set? It's like shamanic medicine, music, world electro tribal beat. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I always had a world electro vibe. I love mixing the analog and digital as, um, in union. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect to divine right. union as well. Right. Like um, everything is already ordained to be. And so I was like, okay, yes. Like she sent me one of her tracks and um, I would, I, I'd invited her to, to do the, the event. And she's like, yeah. And so that was about to happen in September of 2019. It's all, It was always on Labor Day. 
So like every Labor Day, I was committed for 14 years to do this festival other than the year that I had the fire. Um, and then, um, so yes, yeah, so that happened. And it was like the, the biggest festival we had yet. I partnered with um, downtown Dallas, you know, like their marketing group. And uh, we had some huge corporate sponsors and we took up the whole entire Main Street garden. <laughs> and so the whole garden was like a whole nother vision that she had received. Yeah, like right before the event, I I had a dream of being in a three-tiered garden. Um, and um, I, I had a, a, I was sitting with a woman on a, a like a porch swing in the yard. And um, I, I, I just had this familiarity with this woman, but I couldn't see her face. And this jaguar came in and he was behind him. He had all these other animals. He was leading all these other animals to safety away from the fires. And at that time, that's when the Amazon was like hardcore on fire. Um, but the jaguar came in and they started to surround me. And I look over and the person I was talking to was gone. And I knew that she had gone inside and this is in your dream. This was in the dream. And I, I walk, I, I kind of get up. I get a little uncomfortable because there's so many animals around me, but they're kind of like also in spirit form. Um, and it's, it's kind of like, mm, this is getting a little intense. So I start making my way up the tiers of the garden and um, the jaguar is following me. And I start to speed up a little bit and he speeds up and I, I make it up to the porch and I can see inside that the woman I was sitting with was inside. And I realized that she's actually Pachamama that I was sitting with. And I turn and I face the Jaguar, release the fear. And I'm like, okay, what, what is it that you want from me? And I reach my hand out and the Jaguar takes my hand into his mouth and holds it and I just surrendered to it and then he like spits my hand out and telepathically he says why would I want your hand in my mouth <laughs> silly <laughs> human but I also received the message that I was being initiated into um working with the plants on a on like that I'd reached this um this level and it, it was actually a great honor to receive it. I woke up and was just really emotional about it. But then I show up to the event ready to play and I'm getting all of my things this out. Is a, like literally in the center of downtown Dallas. Yeah, I'm getting all my things out, taking them up to the stage, dropping them off to go get some more things. And I turn around and I realize that I'm in a garden and there's three tiers to the garden and, just and then like, she's like sitting ah, up on the tier. I, I, I see you working this thing. <laughs> I gotcha. And so it, I knew that this, I was exactly where I was supposed to be in this moment. And um, so that was the was final event too. That I mean, process. it was so beautiful. The Bhakti House band played and they had a new song about water. And then in the middle of hot ass Texas summer, it started to rain. It was amazing. So it was really, everything was perfect. We ended that circle for the first time ever in a shamanic drum circle. And this was literally like empowering the very center of downtown Dallas with the medicine drum. And it was before my actual medicine drum came in. It was my first drum that I've, I've sat with in, in ceremony for since 2011. And I brought it and we had several drummers that were leading drum circles that day. And we had a wonderful sister leading a crystal bowl meditation. And we all got together in the center of the circle. And um, a lot of the women from my goddess tribe were there representing at my booth. And they smudged the whole circle. And this is happening like literally in downtown Dallas. So you could see this portal of light charging up the whole entire city. It was powerful and amazing. And it was like a beautiful green space in the middle of downtown. So that happened. And that's really how our, our working relationship started. Yeah, and it was after that event that we we all went and had some food afterwards, and we were talking after we ate, and we were like, we really, we should sit together. We should 
Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I recognize the medicine have woman a in her. She recognized like, the medicine woman in me. We're like, we need, sit. To, we need to sit. sit. And I felt called to sit again after sit, not sitting for a year. And I was like, but the work that I wanted to do, I need to do my own work. I didn't want to hold space for anybody else. And I knew she could hold her own. And I was like, we need to sit together because, you know, this, I see you mm -hmm. and on this level. And that's, that's, so we decided we were going to sit together and, um, in January of 2020. Yeah, I did. We were, things kept happening. So we weren't able to sit until January. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, there was a lot going on. I could feel energetically something was coming, something big was coming. Yes. It, we could all feel it, you know, like a freight train. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, we knew I don't something know what's was happening. Going down. I knew that the studio was probably not going to be there for much longer. So we, Which we had lots of conversations about yeah, that too, because, just, you know, being business owners also in the, both sister studios, she's like, you know, I want to hold space for my people. I want to hold space for my teachers. You know, how do I go about transitioning the studio? Cause it's just losing ground. And, you know, and we had lots of fun. Having any more. Yeah. So we're having a lot of conversations like together as like, peers and coaches, you know, like that kind of conversation. Um, and then we decided we're going to sit together. So Autumn, do you have um, any other questions on that? I do. Okay. Uh, first question, do you guys feel free finally, like free in a relationship, free in like, I don't know, you know, like about relief, like something's off your shoulders, you're safe, you're comfortable. That's a really good question. Do you want to lead off with that? Uh, so the question is, do you feel free finally? Do you feel like some relief or there's a weight off of your shoulders? I feel at this point in the journey, I mean, I feel at, at the most peace I've ever felt in this life. I, I absolutely feel freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's like... It's such it's, a cohesive support in this so, relationship that um so good yeah it's so good i i've never been met so clearly i felt so free yeah yeah so um i definitely oh autumn if it logs out just log back in so um she's joining us on zoom for the interview so I have a different experience about freedom because I came from a relationship and being in a 29 year marriage. Um, this year was 29 years and never intending to leave that marriage. I never had any thoughts about leaving. I never, um, never conspired to leave. I never thought I would leave. I just thought that I was doing my work in the world independent of him. And he was doing his thing and totally supportive of my work and never, you know, said that he was not going to do this work with me. It's just that he is on a different path and trajectory spiritually as far as, you know, not really tapping into the shamanic work. He sat with medicine and really processed it in, in the unconscious level, but never really sat with medicine again. But I know I'm a medicine woman and that's my calling. And I, so I continued to deepen that journey and take my shamanic training in 2016 and then travel to Hawaii with a dear friend and hold a wellness wave retreat in 2017 at Kalani over by Pele's, you know, birthing point of uh, the uh, Mount Kilauea, the volcano, the active volcano. And then as soon as I left the island, she literally erupted for eight months straight, creating like a mile or two of new island. Um, and then, so it was just an incredible. Taking out some of my most favorite places. Yeah, it was just. I also have a deep connection with the big island. Yeah, she was Hawaii. literally in that same location um, years before. And so then, you know, to circle back to the whole question about freedom, I never knew I wasn't free um, until I I decided to uh, follow my heart. And so in 2017, I took my daughter and my husband at the time to Kalani, and we also stayed part of the time in Kona, which is the sunny side, and we uh, bought a condo over there. 
and I knew I was called to sit there, but he didn't really want the condo. He just supported me in that purchase. He didn't really care to go back to the island. And that was to me like, what? How can you not want to go back to the island? You know, because it's so embedded embedded in my soul that, you know, I'm obviously, you know, there's galactic DNA in all of us, but I really resonate with the Lumerian and the Pleiadian and they have such a, a huge, um, a huge load of information for us when we do step into the islands of Hawaii. And so, um, and then of course I share that with my soul sister, uh, Tanya, who invited me to do the retreat with her. And then I was called to hold another retreat and, you know, he was not interested in being involved. So I continued to just kind of like my trajectory was, was going from he, like this and his was staying steady and holding place in the land and, you know, holding place in uh, Texas where our, our yoga studio is and our, you know, taking care of the pets. And we were focused on my son who had just left for the Navy in 2017, my daughter who was about to graduate in 2021. And, um, you know, so I was home a lot, but also my heart was wanting to travel. So I was setting all these things up for us to travel. But he also told me he didn't want to go with me. He wasn't really interested in seeing some of those places. For instance, Egypt, he's already been there. He was there in the military, didn't need to go again. You know, um, Hawaii, he already been once. He doesn't want to go again. So I asked her, I was like, do you want to be my travel partner? You know, and she's like, uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Please, I love to travel. So, you know, I'm like, you know, I, as we started, I, as we knew we could work so cohesively together with her bringing the music and me bringing the yoga and then both of us being medicine women and working with the energy of the, of the, the medicine, we knew that we have alchemy there. Because of the ceremony that we set in. And well, and that happened. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, what we're going to talk about in a moment, but even just for the event that, you know, you DJed, I yeah. knew that yeah. we would there make was... a good match to work together in that capacity. Absolutely. And so it wasn't until we sat in ceremony that I was confirmed on like a soul level. And um, we'll talk about that in just a second. But the freedom thing is that, you know, I, never knew that I wasn't really free to fully completely embody, embody and walk my truth until everything came to a head in January of 2021. Um, but that's jumping ahead. So I'll get to that when we get to that, but we want to circle back to January of 2020, which is when we first sat together with the medicine, um, mushroom medicine specifically. Um, Autumn, do you have any other questions that, that's that was actually my next question. When did you know that it was going to become something more than just well, so we, we, so, yeah. we sat in the ceremony in, in, in January of 2020. Well, real quick, let me speak to that. Okay. She was never my best friend. I always had an affinity for her on a level, another level than a friend. It, it wasn't that I was allowed to be attracted to her because I was in a marriage, but I was so attracted to her always like, in, in a way that I could not explain that I'd never felt with anybody else. So I didn't know what category to put it in. It, there's no box to put that in. I just knew that there was a, an attraction that she's not my sister. She's not my friend. I don't know. She's my ceremony, cer ceremony partner. So I always just referred to you as my ceremony partner mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. really the only role that, that was fit. like the thing that, yeah, that was the only role that fit. <laughs> So, you know, because I have a best friend and my best friend is never going to be replaced with this relationship. You know, I have a sister, an actual physical sister, and she's never going to be replaced. You know, there's not, there's not a substitution in those roles and they don't, those roles don't fit, you know, and even sister, like a soul sister, that's not a fit either. And I'll, you know, of course we'll circle back to why, but duh, you know, we were just didn't see it, just didn't see it the whole time. And so we were. But that was perfect. Partners. We we it was it was withheld from uh, from us so that we could. Yeah, it wasn't get, until January of 2021. January right, one 2nd, year later. One year later, after we sat together. So to circle back to January of 2020, when we decided to sit in medicine, it was the new moon. Yeah. What was it? The 27th. I think it was the 27th of J January. Um, at your yeah. space yeah and it ended up so just it being it was the called divine sight healing center healing art center which divine sight is her brand yoga for love is my brand and so divine sight hosted this ceremony which we invited a couple other people but nobody 
nobody else could, could come. Attend. And I was really okay with that because I didn't want to babysit anybody to be flat honest with you. I'm like, I, if I, if I haven't sat with you before, I probably don't want to sit with you right now because I'm here to do my work, you know, and I know that she's here to do her work. We both not sat with the medicine for a while and it was time to really sit and just go deep. And I had a lot of processing to do because my baby boy was under the water in a submarine traveling all over the world. And, you know, I had suffered a, a nine week depression while he was in boot camp that I didn't know what to do with. I'd never been depressed in my life. And that whole experience of in, in some ways, my son is also my twin flame and a soul soul connection that's very inexplicable from mother to son and some mothers and sons don't have that but some do and if you do you understand what i'm saying but i i was very empathic to his journey until i realized i was a helicopter mom on a spiritual level and i had to cut the cord you know and that was really at that ceremony that a lot of that happened mm -hmm. yeah i mean we both were able to well, first we made this tea that was epic. It was epic. <laughs> we Our gonna... medicine man gave us the recipe, which we did a third of what he told us to. And thank God, because otherwise we would have been like journeying until Tuesday and it was a Saturday. So <laughs> there's that. But the tea was amazing. It and was amazing. the space was set up so beautifully. We set up actually with this goddess behind us, this was sitting at her studio. This was the was this altar that was yeah. at the studio? That was the altar. So weird. So here it is in our home, <laughs> in our home studio. So but yeah, yeah so um, this goddess was sitting there and she had set up a space for each of us to sit independent of each other, but connected through tapestries and rugs and our own instruments. We brought our own instruments and and as soon as the medicine hit, we decided to sit really early too, like really early in the day. So we could um, journey and then come back and eat. And I could actually drive back to my home in Ovilla from downtown Dallas. And so we, it felt like we were gone forever, but um, it, we went really deep and hard. And the thing is, it was not, the medicine was really on point because I started speaking light language and channeling as she was speaking it. And I didn't even know that I remembered the language and we started conversing and chanting together and drumming together and playing together. And her instruments were completely complementary to my instruments. And it was this yeah. perfect balance, perfect balance, perfect balance. And there was this like knowing, like we've done this, like, <laughs> so many times this yeah. doesn't just happen <laughs> this isn't just like like we click in this just really balanced way we're, we're working so well together here and, and 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 then i was seeing her in different forms and i remember shifting she was seeing me and she was like you used to have a staff where's your staff yeah i, I saw like, her I that was home. <laughs> yeah i was like, and then she started like spinning her staff after that and really i mean like no one just picks up a staff and spins it like that like it's just yeah she was like on point with it and but the, while we were seeing these aspects of each other and recognizing like oh we've done this um, over and over and over for thousands of years like but, lifetimes but lifetimes. there was but there was no instant like there were no memories that we could pinpoint there was like the like, memories together hadn't yet come in like the book was closed essentially because i asked many times like what do, what is this connection you know what, you know what are the what are the journeys that we've had in past lives or something you know can i get can I get some feedback? And uh, yeah, it was there, it was like access denied. I didn't even ask. I was just happy to have a ceremony partner. I was happy to have a travel buddy. I was happy to do the work with her. And so from that point forward, we were told to start hosting ceremony and, um, and holding, holding space, space together. together. Little did we know that that was 2020, you know, um, it was the very beginning and kind of rustlings were coming through from, you know, the other side of the world and, you know, all the things were happening and 
by the time March rolled around, we were going to sit around the equinox and I actually had an inner goddess retreat. Oh, and to back up, was that 2019? No, that was that next year that we founded the nonprofit, which was 2020. So inner goddess retreat, I was hosting it and we realized that, you know, women are freaking out. Like this pandemic is coming down. Um, I need to go virtual because these women still need to meet together. People were, you know, just throwing up all their shit on me because they didn't know what to do with their vacation time and et cetera, et cetera. And all that happened. And my back went out. My dog jumps off the patio and this is Athena, my dog. Um, she's a Pyrenees Husky. And she was a large puppy at the time and twisted my sacrum. And I had a reading, a coaching call and a reading. And I went in to do the reading. And as I was sitting there doing the reading, my back started to become on fire. And um, I drew the dog and the turtle um, in that reading, which obviously wasn't just for my client. It was for me too. And by the end of that reading, I I was on my rolling office chair. I literally had to roll to my master bedroom and crawl to my bed. And I did not get off of my back for almost 24 hours. Um, and even, even in the middle of the night, I wanted to get up to go to the bathroom and I could not even twist my hips to get to the edge of the bed. I couldn't even scoot. I was completely on my back like a turtle. And so I just had to sit there in it, even though my ex-husband was sleeping next to me, he also could become a very much of a bear when I would bother him at night. And so I did not want to disturb him. I was like, okay, I'm just going to wait until dawn then I'll wake him up and he can pull me out of bed and I can get to the bathroom. And I sat with it and sat with it. And I'm like, okay, this is, is this about me? What is this about? Why, you know, everything we manifest is something, it's a message from source. And if it's something that severe, I need to pay attention. And so, um, by dawn came and he pulls me out of bed and then I was able to crawl. I could crawl just fine. Crawl to the bathroom. He carried me to the car. We went to the chiropractor, got adjusted, sat back, came back to the house and still was on my back. And then the next day got adjusted again and I got the message and I was like, Oh, this is everybody else throwing up their shit on me. This is not even mine. Like, I understand that I'm holding space for all these women, but I have decided that I'm going to hold space for these women virtually to keep everybody safe and to also placate everyone's fears. And the ones that are going to show up, we're going to have an amazing two days of an inner goddess retreat virtually. And I'm going to just give them a ticket to the fall retreat in replacement. And so spirit gave me all this information, realized it wasn't mine. Instantly, my back was better. And then the next day she calls me. It was the it was the, it was the day that everything was shut down. Well, the it, that was a Thursday, mm-hmm. and they were everybody was saying it, everything is going to shut down on Monday. And I will. So people are panicking. That's you know, of course, no toilet paper was anywhere. <laughs> you know, all the freaking canned food shelves were wiped out. We're yeah. like, what the actual fuck is happening here? And I woke up that morning, and before I even opened my eyes, I just heard really loudly, "Go empty the studio, get everything out. You don't know if or when you're actually going to get to go back. Um, it is, it's done." Uh, go remove all your things. So I was supposed to hold the retreat that Friday. And I was actually going to be teaching and and helping and assisting in the retreat. And I was like, I've got to do this. And I called her. I was like, this is the message I'm getting. And she was like, I think that's exactly what's supposed to happen. I will meet you there. I'm like, well, you're back. (laughs) She's like, I'm okay. Really? I'm okay. I was able to help her pack the whole entire studio. It was 3,000 square feet of stuff. We jammed that both into both of our cars. And, you know, through I made, that process. I made a load on Friday and another load on Saturday. And anything else that didn't make it was just, just donated to the universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she, um, with that, she had a massive grief process and a death process because that was her baby. You know, she had it for six years. And yeah. so to hold space for that portal, yeah. it was a beautiful portal. There was lots of she amazing things. Up that happened in that space and so to show up for you and to hold space for that ceremoniously and close that portal Mm -hmm. was such an honor 
And I remember we, we closed everything up and placed that energy into a crystal. Mm -hmm. And this tapestry was the last thing that was removed. Mm -hmm. And the next place it was put up was in your master bedroom, <laughs> which was in February of 2020. <laughs> so um, that's when I moved in with her, but that was uh, 2021. That was a whole year and a month later. But so throughout all that, we still weren't aware of what was happening, but our studios merged together. Yeah. Like all of all her of yoga stuff. Equipment, it was she's like, like, what do I do with it? You know, like, I'm like, I'll take it to my studio. I mean, she had blocks and bolsters and shelving and mats and, you know, all the stuff that a normal studio owner has. And I was like, well, I'll just put the shelves up in my studio and we'll, you know, figure it out, figure it out, whatever. And I moved all that, more. <laughs> the tables the and world. chairs and all that. Everything was used for studio went to my space. Everything that could be used in personal went to her home. And then the rest went in her garage. Mm -hmm. A giant and pile. Giant pile that was in her garage for quite some time. And um, that's really what happened. It shut we, down. It, it, and then we were like, our, our studio is just merged. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Very... You know, we know we're being called to work together. We, we now we know. Have... And now the universe is like merged our studios. This is interesting. <laughs> like, you can't. Yeah, like even yeah, I even oh, had the purge buckets okay. from like, ceremony. Like not you know, even it, um, not not from our intentions, but it was like set up. You know, yeah. Like, like okay, I'll put all the studio stuff in my car. You put all the personal stuff in your car. So it's like okay, yeah. Well, I guess that's happening. <laughs> so um, yeah, we had an, an amazing virtual retreat. Everything was perfect, and we were told to continue to hold ceremony together. So, so um, we did Autumn, do you have any other questions? On that or about what something else? your future look like well we we didn't we what was the question she said what did our future look like and and for us i mean we were just we do we we were going to be doing ceremony together yeah that we was were sitting it. as ceremony partners that was and so we knew the next time we could sit together would be on the next um equinox or solstice. So the next one was summer solstice. Summer solstice. We it was did that ceremony and it was magic. It Absolutely was magic. magic. I mean, the way like, that we flow together in the We medicine. got to really see it live and in person. Like, okay, this is what we're being called to do. And now we're actually doing it. And it was just yeah. absolutely seamless. And it was on my little sacred land um, where I'd held ceremony all those years. And that's yeah, why I got go my on. headdress. Yeah, the headdress is over here. I don't know if you can see it. But <laughs> oh, this guy, these can't. Yeah. There it is right there. there. And then my headdress is over here. Yeah. But yeah, you so you can't see it on the other video. But excuse me. Um, <laughs> so um, we were just told to continue to hold ceremony. And so we, even through the pandemic, we I said we're holding space for women to come. And do the work. So we and did summer solstice fall. and then fall and, and then, then fall retreat. Why was it at the fall retreat? You weren't there, but we still held I it. Know, but I was in going, person. why am I not there? I should, I think I'm supposed to be But I, what I did there. It just, it's because I, was, I had already planned it and I already had guest teachers aligned up and I just, it was, I remember going, I feel like I'm supposed, supposed to be, be involved in these and I'm not at this one, but, but yeah. it was okay. And then we did our winter, winter solstice, solstice. Um, and it was the winter solstice. That well, was... let's back up to the, the fall where our girls came. All right. So uh, we held our daughters. It was gorgeous. And then our sacred sister that the previous, it was on Labor Day of 2020, which was a year to the date that we had been sitting in that garden in downtown Dallas right, holding exactly. the event. Right. So a whole year later, and also the woman that played the crystal bowls, dear Tressa, dear sister came as well. And she was also holding space for that event. And she was on our board for the DFW free day of yoga. So the three of us medicine women actually a year later, were holding space on a whole nother level with all of our daughters, with all of our daughters present, which was so beautiful to work within the medicine and to work within the space together. And it was our second ceremony, but it, it was like second of thousands of ceremonies because right, everything right. was so beautifully orchestrated. 
And um, our daughters are only five weeks apart in right. age. <laughs> and to, um, they, you know, they both never had sat with the medicine and it was really beautiful, but I want to back up also to May. So, um, May of 2020, I had a three day ayahuasca ceremony. Um, and June or April, I was told to get my medicine drum. Thank you. I hear your voice. <laughs> Coffee is my spirit animal. <laughs> That's another same. thing. I mean, we feel the same about coffee. It's a ritual. Um, <laughs> it is a ritual, you know, with a mushroom powder and agave and all that stuff. So, anywho, to I'm digressing. May, I was asked to sit in ayahuasca ceremony, and I knew that 2020 was my year to say yes to everything that the universe offered me. So I said yes, but that only came in because look at my drum. It's right there. My medicine drum was, I was told to find my medicine drum because I knew sitting in ceremony that my little tiny drum that I had had was not going to cut it. I needed something. It's not sufficient. It was not, and it's a beautiful drum. I don't disrespect that drum at all because it was my first drum. I got it in San Antonio. Mad love it, for the drum. Yes, but yes. so my medicine drum told me that she's coming and I needed to find the medicine woman who was going to do the drum for me. And this is a vegan buffalo drum. And my mentor from 2011 um, came to my heart, Patricia Dancing Elk. So I reached out to Patricia. She, I'd also seen her at several of the festivals. You know, she had a booth next to me even. And we didn't really chat. She came and did some workshops for me at my studio in 2011. And then for several years, we did not see each other. And this was only 2020. And I, of course, I kind of followed her um, on Facebook every now and then, but not really um, connecting on a personal level. And so, you know, 2020 brought everyone together on a personal level, like yeah. your full on soul family. And so I was called to connect with her. And when things started opening up, she had finished painting my drum and we met at a coffee shop when the restaurants were like 25 percent open. And she the first thing she says to me is, here's your drum. Oh, in two weeks, we're sitting with ayahuasca. And I said that before I even took a breath, I said, OK, I'm there. And I was like, oh, wow. And I hadn't sat with ayahuasca before. I'd only sat with psilocybin and combo the, with my dear friend who served me, Tressa, the um, nine, what was it, six months before in December, winter solstice 2019. And that's when I started sitting with Hape for the first time. And then, so as I went to go sit with ayahuasca, Patricia and I were like on a Thelma and Louise road trip. And as we're heading out to almost to Oklahoma, she's like, do you need vulture medicine in your medicine bag? And I'm like, yeah. And vulture medicine has always spoken to me since my father crossed over um, right after the house fire. And I saw nine vultures on the way from Bedford to, to Ovilla, which is just a 45 minute drive. And the vulture medicine is all about opening up the crown chakra and complete spiritual enlightenment. And they're the only raptor that doesn't kill. Um, and they are an essential part of our ecosystem. And they're also freaking magic. And so she's like, well, look to the side of the road. And there's a vulture that just got hit. And so she makes this big mile around U-turn because we're on a one lane highway. And we go and pick up this bird. And I was as like, you do. as you do, <laughs> being a medicine woman, you know, that all the dead animals, you know, have to have their proper place. But the raptors especially have a specific purpose with the medicine and their feathers are, have been used in ancient ceremony forever and ever and ever. Um, you can see any Native American headdress is full of eagle feathers or owl feathers or hawk feathers or, and so the vulture was like, okay, so we grab. I called him Robert, picked up Robert <laughs> and Robert was not as fresh as we thought. And we get to the IS ceremony and I was like, "Woo, okay, this has to be taken care of right now. And so we were at this massive, um, like automotive barn shop that was next to the house that we were holding our ceremony in. And I went in there and just got an ax and I just took the wings off and, um, she donated the rest of the animal to the earth and I sat and laid the wings out in the sun and let them dry and made these beautiful, beautiful ceremonial wings, which I'll share with you here. And this is one of them um, as it's dried. And so these fans are, 
I dance with them. I use them to fan the fire. I use them for smudging and for clearing. Um, so these, these beautiful, <laughs> Oh, my, my eye. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that happened in March, I mean, in May. And then through the medicine, I was told to get trained to sit with combo and to learn how to serve Sapo in combo. And so I got my training in July and then started sitting on a daily practice with Hape, which is sacred, sacred tobacco snuff. And she also did a combo inoculation in July. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then um, I met her daughter. I sang in two of them. <laughs> yes. The Purge was, was a song. So that, um, all the medicines started coming in. And uh, I was able to also meet her daughter, uh, which is my bonus daughter, my soul daughter. Sage and then Sage and I did some massive spiritual work and some clearing with on the first day we met, um, which is a whole other story, a side story. Um, and then we did a soul retrieval and then came back and picked her up from her combo ceremony. And then the a month and a half later, the, girl, the girls decided to sit with us in ceremony. And so that ended up, you know, being a full circle with our girls, ourselves. It was a beautiful Labor Day ceremony whole year later to the time that we started working together and so we were just so confirmed that you know this is the work we're supposed to be doing we started getting invited to come to other host other retreats or to come to other locations and we just started saying yes okay this is the path we're doing we're, we're doing this full on and literally a month after that i was told i finally got the paperwork that closed down the dfw free day of yoga and i was told to completely shut it down because no one on my board of directors was holding space for it in the way that I was. And I knew that my work was taking me on a much deeper level to, than to hold a superficial entertainment style ceremony, a uh, uh, festival. And so I was like, okay, I closed down the, the DFW free day of yoga. And literally the next day spirits like, well, you need to do something with the inner goddess retreats. It needs to be separated from your yoga for love online training programs. And I was like, okay, I don't know why, but I mean, apparently my, my company's supposed to be separating and they're supposed to have their own thing. And then spirits like, well, why don't you just start researching nonprofits? And I was like, really? I just shut down a nonprofit. Like I don't, I don't need to do another nonprofit. And spirits like, I'll just, just look into it. And within an hour, in an hour, I had already filed for a nonprofit. And I messaged her and I was like, um, do you want to be my vice president? Cause uh, like we're a nonprofit now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we need a board of directors. Oh, why not? I think we did this backwards, but you know, so we got our board of directors together, which Autumn sits on our board as well. Holla. Yes. So that's really that, how that looped around a whole nother year later. And um, yeah. how do you have any other questions well, on that? Or any other things to lead right. off? No, that was a really beautiful story, though. It's funny that you were like intertwined all the way through, like whether you knew it or not. We've been in, uh, we have, now that we've talked, we've been looping around each other for decades. We've mm -hmm. lived in the same neighborhoods at different times. Went to the same clubs. We've gone to the yeah, same clubs. The, mm -hmm. like, with the same hangout spots, same clo she the clothing store that I went specifically to Deep Ellen to shop in. She worked at, yeah, yeah. Like just we've been literally looping each yeah. other since, and since we live together now too. Like pieces that I have, like dish sets, I have one piece of. She has the other three, you know, um, like things that I own, such as. Like some, we have, we're both carry owl medicine in a, in a very deep way. And she has matching sets to all my owls. You know, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a, our son is here. Sorry, so yeah, it's, and so as I look around, um, I hope you can stay on autumn. I don't know how much longer you have, but we want to loop around to the whole twin flame story, but the December ceremony happened next. And well, it was the super... October Aya ceremony. Oh, that's right. We went happened. That. That's right. We had our, I had the October <laughs> retreat, and then we were invited to sit again 
we were ayahuasca. going to go sit for ourselves at an ayah ceremony. And that was actually the first time I got to um, play the instruments in an ayah ceremony. And that was... Uh, we got to it, camp together, which was super nine fun. Nine years later from after getting the message in the ayah ceremony to go collect the instruments, nine years later to the month, I was then sitting in a ceremony and was invited to actually play the instruments. I thought I was going to just do the work for myself, but it turned out that the work for myself was actually to play the... Well, how that happened is that <laughs> the second night, the shaman came up to her before it happened and she said, I want you to, to play the instruments. The spirits the have told me you're supposed to play tonight and you have permission and will you bring your instruments and your headdress and you, you, you don't say no to that <laughs> you don't say when the shaman no asks you to do the work you say yes ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> i will i will do that and so i sat in you know my own space and witnessed where i saw her fully in her divine masculine power and was just in love you know with the process and the whole thing and i didn't even realize that's because she's my divine partner and the shaman saw... said jerry you's a sexy motherfucker and she says you're sexy for no reason sexy for no reason <laughs> this and, is fully in the and medicine. she said yeah she is yes, and she i was is. like <laughs> i'm like did i say that out loud i just think, I, a <laughs> I, think I did say that she, out loud she just said uh, Okay, keep working, keep doing the thing. <laughs> but I don't know if she told no. me like that. Okay. Yeah. The coyote medicine was really working that night too. So she was fully in her trickster, which was making me crack up, which really brought me into my fey energy. And so I was like, I was doing handstands. I was like, everyone is in their cocoon and I'm like moving with the medicine and like, you know, like chanted to myself and I'm trying not to be disruptive because I want to respect everyone's process, but I was moving and doing things and watching her and watching the shaman and, you know, singing. And I look over and everyone's like in their thing, you know, and then I would go back into my little cocoon for a little while. And then I come back out and I would do some yoga and, you know, so it was very, I realized I could operate in the medicine in that level as well. Although I wasn't, you know, a part of hosting that ceremony, I felt it felt very familiar to navigate in that space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because like the sister next to me says, I was like processing hard. I look over and you're upside down. You know, she's like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like doing a half handstand on the um, next to the bar, you know, I mean, it was like the medicine, the energy was so welcoming it was very welcoming you know and there was the second weekend i'd sat with ayahuasca but she'd sat many 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 times years before and so it was very very familiar so it was like a, a space that you'd been in often yeah, i hadn't been there in about six six years or so but it was it was like no time had passed mm -hmm. which literally time is an illusion anyway but as we all but, know that that journey was you know it was a significant moment just in my own in my own process but then to also witness each other in that ceremony and our in our own energies uh, just showing up was was really profound and then when we held our winter solstice ceremony so it was um it was full on winter that weekend it it, in December is kind of questionable in Texas, whether it's going to be full on winter in December or not, but it was an old man. Winter was like, <sighs> you know, and so we were like, I was super intimidated. Um, we had a, a, both had a pool floating practice the whole summer and I still had my pool up and I, I was super fearful of like being so cold all night because I have a lot of vata in my system in my Ayurvedic constitution um, and I have a lot of wind energy 
and I get cold really easy, which is great because she keeps me super warm. I'm hot. <laughs> so, She's cold. Yes, it's a great balance. Um, Virgo, Pisces. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, we started to find all these things out later, um, very shortly later. But December, I was told to create my headdress. And I also was meditating about the cold and I was told to do a cold plunge and started following the meditations of Iceman Hoff and um, the, the cold baths and the uh, release the fear. And I remembered in that ceremony, my energy of being a Valkyrie and all of the lifetimes I spent in the Nordic and I have, I'm Swedish in my roots. And I was like, no wonder why I love Hawaii. I'm so fucking tired of being cold. You know? <laughs> But in that ceremony, um, it was even more so us working together at partners, as partners. And it was the first time we put our, our ceremonial mats together. We had crystals kind of dividing our spaces, but our energy was completely combined as a partnership in hosting that winter ceremony. And it, and my headdress came in and we were making, you know, finishing the that you know, gluing and things, you know, right before we were ready to sit. And I, you know, went to go get dressed and I put on my um, ceremonial robe, which was velvet blue, mid midnight blue and the headdress, which um, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll bring it over here. And it also has a lot of blue in it. Um, and I had a, a lady on Etsy make the Valkyrie. And this was my great grandma. And she gave me this beautiful chain, um, which, um, so that, that came in and got completed and I put it on and it was before the women arrived. And then here is a knot, this one in the front. Oh. Yeah, the Celtic knot. This right here. I've carried this for years and years and years. Yeah, and then I received this from my dear Patricia Dancing Elf from a sisterhood exchange. What kind of crystal is that again? Um, Autumn? Aqua Aura. Aqua Aura. Yeah, it's so powerful. Super tapped into the psychic realm. And so as I completed, and then I also um, have my, you know, my what are those called? Cuffs? Anyway, um, made to match. And then finished the headdress and I put everything on and I came out and my husband at the time was standing in the dining room after we finished the final touches on it. And I, I got dressed. Hummingbird. There was there's tiny hummingbird feathers on the corners of the headdress. Oh, so tiny and cute. And I put everything on and was completely ready. And she was ready. Um, came out and I, I, I saw her. It was just like, oh my God, like a whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just blown away, really. And it was just in awe. Of Recording her. in progress. It, in, back on. <laughs> so this was what the winter solstice ceremony we're picking up from where it dropped off on the recording of December of 2020 when my headdress first came in. And so she came out, I came out, we met and we just saw each other again on this whole other level because at that point, like my headdress had also expanded. I had added some things to it and then she... And Isn't that when your staff came in? Well, because I had, yeah, the staff came in and I had found an owl on the way to the Aya ceremony as well. So those wings from that owl became part of my headdress. And so I was putting those on as you were creating your headdress. And it was just like another level up. And it yeah. Was like and six it was months like later from receiving the headdress. And her receiving her wings, and, first, and now six months later, I'm adding to the headdress, and I've got a staff, and now she's got her headdress. Right, and also, and you know, like, the medicine drum. I've been <laughs> getting very familiar with how to play it, and I mean, it started coming through. Mm -hmm. um, there was some more instruments that you know keep coming through, but the 
you know, all the tools were present is basically yeah. what was happening. I and so we felt that summer. That's right. Because that was a huge thing too. She has, she had been like 10 years wanting a handpan. 15 really, but 10 years I got the confirmation because I got a Facebook reminder memory. 10 years ago, you were wanting this handpan. Which I was going, I really want a handpan. Interesting hand pan. about those like, Facebook memories. 10 years ago, this post, and I wanted it before that. Like, like why, why am I not? This happen? Yes, why like, is I'm this done. Happen? Like, why I'm am I waiting? This happen? And, and it, it, it all showed up and it and aligned. And that oh. was a beautiful. So this was the closure track. of our platonic relationship. Because right after that ceremony happened, and we sat in that cold, cold, cold. And what was that and moment that, like, where was, do you see her? Yes, that was so okay. Yes, yeah, so tell how that happened, how that came in. So there, there was a moment she was, um, you know, we usually take some pictures before ceremony. We're all dressed up. And the whole group. All the time. And sometimes you know? we do individual. And so um, Rich was actually taking some photos of you and. I was just seeing her in like on a soul level in her full Valkyrie, like the this galactic queen that she is, this embodiment. I'm, I'm just in awe. And, I, I'm and just, I saw how she recognized me, how I'm she just was looking. Like I know oh, wow, like just this amazing being is standing here and he's like Doing the motions like a good husband, okay. taking pictures. You Let know. me take a picture. And, I, and, and, and I, he didn't recognize what he was seeing. He's like, oh, you're going to go put on your stuff and go to your goddess stuff. It was like it was a costume, and it was yeah. not a costume. And I saw that he was like, just let me get the pictures over with. Y'all go do your thing. I'll go sit here and play on the computer, do my thing, and I'll see you in the morning. You know, but it was kind of like he was rushing through the photos and – I also saw how she was looking and recognized like my truth through this placing of the headdress in the, the garb and the remembrance of that power that has been previous lifetimes embodied so many times. And also when I saw her in her full garb and her headdress in standing in her her beautiful divine masculine, I realized that there was something much deeper that was at play here and still ceremony partners. So she, yeah, this is the like, role she plays in ceremony. Like this is the role I play in ceremony. Honor and respect for her contracts, her relationships, her family, etc. Hey, you know, like not an option, not even remotely an option but I saw her and I saw that he didn't see her and I actually had to say something I had to, do do you see your wife do you see her look look at her and he was like oh, I see her I see her and I, I just I felt it in my heart it's like she, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't get it he doesn't actually see her and that makes me really sad for for both of them because she's not being witnessed for her truth and, and, and seen and, and ah, you know, kind of a little frustrating because because I saw the magnificence and, and, and he, he didn't get it. And it just made me really sad for that. And that I, I saw the recognition that she had, which made me really excited. And that was that was enough for me to to see how she witnessed in that moment and it was the beautiful beautiful ceremony through the cold the cold decided we sat in the south and the right by the river came down yes and she was her wings so massive and she like <laughs> flew in with her sword like that actually happened that's another story because it hopped also, over the fire but and she took out she some, did. some some dark energy. She did, and so it was amazing. Yeah, like literally, Fuck I was in us. it, and that medicine was strong. <laughs> it was, it was so strong, strong, and I was in it. And she's like, "I uh, wake up," and I was like, "She snapped into me." And she instead of calling me Isla, she calls me Aya. Aya. And so I snapped. Which is the first and, word I ever said in 
flat language in 2011, I did piece that together later i realized i've literally been calling your name since the first time i ever spoke that language i've been calling you now it makes sense now yeah makes sense. and i received my name through ayahuasca in may and she told me my name is isla and my fairy name my fey name has always been isla and you know i'm very connected to the fey and Anytime we go to the Ren Fair, I, I'm, I get to dress in my fae and, you know, any Halloween or any kind of event, either fae or gypsy, you know, is what I, what my role is and, uh, or mermaid. That's pretty much the three things that I always choose. Um, except for back in the very first costume that I ever did when I was with my now ex was Cleopatra, which is totally circling back because I'm about to head to Egypt. Um, but so all those archetypes coming through and, you know, as you dress up, but you're not really dressing up, you know? And so um, she told me my name was Isla and I was like, oh, that's what I've always went by in my fey name. And then, you know, she calls me Aya, which is her nickname for me. But when she calls me that, it's like strikes my heart because I remember the so many lifetimes of, of her saying my name, you know? And so then she received her name, Takata, and through that, through our Reiki lineage as well, Hawaii Takata is one of the grand masters in the Reiki lineage. And I put that connection together after a couple months of like, wait a second, Takata is also in our Reiki lineage. And so that kind of looped around as well. And then, then it, through the medicine too, um, in ayahuasca, she told me my second name was Valkyrie, which was a total confirmation. And then circling back to December, the valkyrie energy really through with the headdress and the cuffs and the winter energy so that really takes us to um that night after ceremony and we were sitting in the cabin decompressing all the women were eating and conversing and integrating and sharing and i just felt this need to really um, be close to her and sit with her and so we just sat together um you know just leaning against each other as friends do it wasn't anything inappropriate, but it was definitely the connection. My, the physical touch connection was, was really calling. Um, and I felt like, how is this connection happening? Like, I don't even know what's appropriate, what's not, but I just felt the need to be close to her. And so that was enough, you know, that was plenty. And then, um, then it was New Year's. And so this is really where, everything came in um so new year's and it was, well i got a message <laughs> it was new year's day uh -huh. one one mm -hmm. of 21 mm -hmm. was when you looked at those memories on mm -hmm. facebook well i got a a, a message from a, a past lover who oh it's like had a, been you know a yeah. decade before and you know we had a, a we still have a lot of love for each other that, you know, that relationship didn't work out. We were on different paths, but we, we had a really profound connection and our, um, we had a actually a, a really beautiful tantric connection. And it was, she's just sent me, I, it was kind of an anniversary. So like a, a when we had kind of come together a decade ago, it was on a New Year's Eve and had kind of a profound recognition of each other. So she sent me a message for New Year's Eve, just sending me love and hey, how you doing? And just, just, I love you, you know, like just a genuine care, you know? And But what came up for me is the recognition of like, you know, that was, there were some really beautiful parts of that relationship that I I want to call into my life. I, not from her, but the aspects that we did have in that connection that I am ready to have that type of connection again with someone else. And, and it put me in kind of a review of past relationships and certain aspects of different relationships that were really powerful and really beautiful. Um, and what I wanted to 
call in for myself and and that that good good that deep profound mm -hmm. love that uh deep connection uh that that being on path with someone who whose path individually is whole and complete but is parallel in in, in moving and that's with what i was missing my own path i didn't and, know and i recognized that i was like you know what i want someone like lisa that that can walk this path with me i want somebody that's like this person that can that meets me in this way and then like that person was that meets me on this way i want all of those things together in one and you know it was all kind of coming up and you know thank you so much for sending that message <laughs> because it brought up all of these things and it made me get really really clear with myself and, and recognize that my heart was ready to receive that and then i was open to to that kind of connection and it again. Had been years since you've been in a commitment yeah in a relationship. it's been almost six years at that point five six years and so as my friend and my ceremony partner and we talk pretty much every day yeah i mean, we're like video chatting <laughs> all the time constantly. every day constantly I, I was getting teased by my daughter Jamie, 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 why are you always on the phone with Jamie? You know, and to the point where I'm like, I mean, we just have so much to talk about and so much in common that everything that happens, we share with each other. And we never run out of things to talk about. Never. And even in the silence, it's comfortable, you know, so we could just be chatting and then just kind of chill and not really chat and then chill and, and then chat some more. And, you know, so it's just this ebb and flow that's, through my day and throughout the whole last what, year it had been happening what's coming through now the downloads are this and the downloads <laughs> like were coming through like crazy because it was 2020 you know so we would talk all the time and a whole year of that you know yeah. so and I so she messaged me right away when this came in and this message and, and and say you know this is what's coming up for me like like I'm recognizing that I'm calling this in and 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 I, I just well, I mean like it. it's you need to say what you said because it was. But I can't remember what I said. Okay, so what so she was said. So describing like a tantric connection, <laughs> right? When I like, I so said what she about said is she that, said that good, good. in the message she goes, yeah. "I am calling in this good, good toroidal flow connection of divine sort, re, uh, divine connection, and this union, and I feel like I'm ready to receive that now, and." So when I heard that message, it hit my heart like, whoosh, and I could like, what the actual fuck? Like, why did that hit me when she was just simply stating her truth and calling what she wanted to call into the universe? Why did that hit me? Again, not an option. She's I, not even like, not she even wasn't, aware. Blinders on. She wasn't an option. I did. It was not. <laughs> I was not aware at all of the connection that we had on that level and so i sat with that message and it gave me butterflies in my stomach it um it made me jealous in a weird she way got real quiet i did not respond <laughs> and she got real quiet. it's just like we've been talking on and off all day and i was like that is jealousy what the fuck is that how would I even feel that? And the only reason I could feel it is because I felt that someone else would take that role and it would make me jealous. And I was like, okay, whoa, I can't even have that role. I'm married. How could I even be in that role that she named when I'm in this relationship? So I just sat and I, I was, my head was spinning. I'm like, I don't even understand what's being described here, but what's being described here is everything I've ever wanted in a sexual connection. But yet, you know, I've been practicing Tantra on my own, in my own practice. And I've been sharing some of those practices with um, my then husband in the ways that he could understand it. But without him delving deep into those practices, it was very hard for me to be completely authentic and bringing through that without it feeling weird or crazy or, you know, um, inauthentic. And so I was only able to share bits and pieces of these practices with him. So I just messaged her back and I was like, listen, I've, I've got a lot going on in my head. I'm going to have to sit with this. 
I'll message you later. And I just got quiet. And, and I got like hit with this, like, and I was like, hold on. <laughs> what, what your proxy You gave me space. And then you does came it, back. Like, but does it have anything to do with me? And because I was starting to like, wait, this, this conversation shouldn't be triggering because you said you were triggered. And I was like, something else is going on here. And so I was like, is, does it have anything to do with me? And she messaged me back and she said, it has everything to do with you. And then I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. Just message me when you're ready. Yeah. So then I sat with it and I was like, oh, I don't even know what these feelings are, but they feel good and it feels heart centered and it feels in alignment with my truth, but I'm not supposed to be feeling these feelings because I'm supposed to be in a marriage I'm supposed to do this and supposed to do that. And all these supposed to's kept happening in my head. And I just messaged her back and I don't even know what I said. I just said, well, yes, it has everything to do with you, but also spirit is telling me to read this book, this passage out of this book, which is literally, she like, like right it here. like jumps off the shelf. At yes. Her. And I was, I had sat with this the last time I actually studied with it was, um, when I sat with ayahuasca in May and then I literally put it down I put a bookmark in it. I wasn't even part. Of, I was only part of the way through. Well, there's my bookmark right there in the middle. And I was reading about the dragon within <laughs> the womb containing a very strong ball of energy composed of concentrated wisdom, power, and magic as old as the earth itself. And that's where I stopped reading, which I had had an experience that's a whole nother Dell, but like 2018, 2019, I was actually doing some womb work with another friend. There were a lot of pieces that were coming in a lot of information, the dragon, the dragon egg, the, the, the sacred womb, the Holy grail, yeah, and this, the, this the divine book of, union of the masculine yeah. and feminine. There were all of these pieces that had already been coming in. And so, yeah, she pulls out this book in this moment of like what the fuck is happening something yeah, just, is coming like, just read this book and i went i flipped way into the back where i hadn't even read before and read this passage <laughs> oh there's there's one of our ceremony sisters information opening the womb and i was reading this like i don't even know where it is exactly but it was this um basically like a, a journaling exercise with your yoni and it was like, okay, you're talking about parts of the yoni and the An exploration, and, and, if you will. Exploration, if you will. And it was just like leading questions of a conversation to go within your own body and your own being is speaking through the divine feminine and answering these questions through a journaling exercise. So I was reading this exercise, which went through all the anatomical parts of the yoni. And she's like, <laughs> this, this is not helping. This. <laughs> This is not helping at all. In fact, it's making it worse. So what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I think I'm just going to go. Like, it was almost midnight on January 1st. And I was like, like, I think I'm going to go just take a bath. Yeah. So, like, And I was also, like, having had a, a similar type of experience with another person in, in, like, it was similar, but it was not the same. But where I was in this moment, it felt similar, right? Because there had been this like moment of some like remembrances coming up, right? And and I was like, okay, so it's just kind of coming up. It'll pass. Just give it like, you know, a few hours or a day or so. And and like it, it it's just some remembrances right. coming That's through. What even thought you know, because we had had some you know, this friend and myself had had some remembrances come up and the, in some of those past lives, we had been in union. Others, we were sisters, others, we were friends. It was a combo, you know, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of feelings that come up 
when you have those memories resurface from past lives. So moving through those, we were like, okay, oh, it's all good, you know, but it, you have to process that emotion. So I was like, oh, it's just some like past life remembrances coming mm -hmm. to the surface. We'll move through it. It's all good. We're just ceremony partners. Yeah. So she's right? like, why don't you it's just, just go do that practice? Just go do that practice. Maybe it'll yeah. clear something for you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Take my bath, I put all my crystals in there, charge everything up, put all the salts in there, turn on the candles. Rich had already went to sleep. I was in there, you know, in my own sacred space because every night I would spend hours and hours in front of the altar, you know, doing my practices and praying and meditating and channeling and working with Reiki and reading sacred texts. And so this was part of my practice. And so I went into the bath and started just meditating and praying and spirit was just telling me to do the gateways of Shakti, which I had just read about and opening the gates. And I'd never been able to learn more about that because I hadn't ever read farther in the book and also hadn't had a partner to practice it with. And so when I was reading about that and doing the practices, I was like, okay, something is activating here. It activated a whole entire circuit within my being, which opened my heart and spirit prompted me at that moment, really getting to a pure orgasmic state, massively orgasmic state. And spirit's like, speak in your heart, look in your heart right now. And where do you want to send this love? And I was like, well, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. I'm in spirit's like, stop the supposed to use right now in this moment. Where do you want to send this orgasmic love? And I said, well, to Jamie, and in that moment, the orgasm released, and I just went into this bliss state, shooting out of my body, and came back, and I was like, what the fuck, you know, whoo, and I get out of the bath, and I'm like, sitting in front of my altar, and doing my Abhyanga practice, rubbing the oil, and like, trying to download what happened, and then she starts blowing up my phone. Because while she was doing that, I was just like sitting on the couch, scrolling through Facebook or some bullshit, not really doing anything, just like blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I get hit with this like <laughs> massive, blissful, orgasmic, like what the fuck and her face appears in front of me and i am literally on the couch just like <laughs> out of nowhere out of like out of nowhere just like what how is it even possible for me to be having an orgasm right now <laughs> in this moment when i'm not doing and like my head isn't even there i'm not like no stimuli <laughs> there's nothing happening <laughs> and yet i'm feeling all of it and you know because her face appeared in front of me i was like what the fuck? what is happening you know i i knew in the back of my mind okay she had gone to the bathtub and we had talked about her doing this practice but <laughs> i didn't expect to get hit with it and and it, I didn't it, even know it that hit I could, it would be sent. so hard. Like, I, I I couldn't function, and I and I was like, "What the fuck?" And then she she didn't answer because she was still in her process. And I like I stumbled to the bathroom, where like <laughs> like a drunk, like I had to stop and pause and hang on to things. I couldn't even walk right, <laughs> and I like made my way back from the bathroom. And I just like fell over on the couch and I was literally like clenching a pillow. <laughs> like, going, oh my God. And it's not stopping. I'm just like, for real, the Lord, keep happening. I'm like, what is going on? And she finally responds and she's like, did you feel that? And I'm like, um, I'm still feeling it. Like, what, what the hell? What is happening? We didn't understand at all that um, the she's twin like, flame oh, connection. I just, Spirit told me to just like bring it, like send out what I felt in my heart to you and 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 release that one. I was like, well, I 
freaking got it massively. Yeah, and like she, I, I didn't even know that could happen. Like we did not have any no. idea. No. Since then, we've talked to other twin flames that it's happened to, but didn't have any idea that was a possibility. Yeah. So, so hang I, on a like, second. Let me come back to this. I'm gonna stop and restart. Okay. One moment. There we go. One moment. This one's um okay, there we go. So So this is uh taking starting back up from January second of twenty twenty one where the download happened the it, the orgasmic bliss energy was sent out from my heart space and it hit you. You were in Plano, Texas, 45 minutes from me. And then, you know, felt that, saw that, came in and was like, we're communicating on voice message and texting and like what actually happened. Like I, so I couldn't understand it. Um, and so we were like, okay, let's just go just like, lie okay. down. Let's just go okay. lie down. And she's like, oh, I'm gonna, go. I'm just gonna go to bed. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, I can't fucking sleep. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> like, I, I was exhausted from that what? massive orgasm, you know, and the whole tantric, uh, you know, experience. And so I just laid down, and I, I crashed for a couple hours, and then I'm like, okay, uh, like it's not calming. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go take a shower. And I was like, well, I'm just going to take care of myself in the shower <laughs> as well. And then also I had this, like, I just I want to send this back. Um, I, like, I want her to feel that in return. Um, and I, I, you know, like, Spirit was telling me to also just send, send it, reciprocate it. And so I did. So I, was, I was totally asleep, though. Totally asleep. And I woke up massive, blissful like, orgasm. And then I'm just like kind of standing in the shower, like, oh my God, like what is happening? This is like next level over the top. And my phone starts blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had woken up literally full on panting as if in like, full sex like in the middle of it and i woke up in that state and i went to my altar and go was like what is happening what is going on spirit please explain this doesn't make any sense and it was like orgasm after orgasm coming through in this wave of shock and i was messaging her like what happened and she's like well i sent it back <laughs> and i was like are you freaking kidding me like how is this even happening? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. We're just, we stayed on the phone until dawn and then kind of slept and then woke back up and it continued to happen. Even if we weren't on the phone, we weren't communicating. Like waves would just come out of nowhere and it would just like literally stop you in your tracks. You'd just be like, yeah, doing regular da, things. Da, 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 da. I'm just you know, around the house. This and... from the room to the other room because cleaning the house or whatever. And then you just like, <laughs> and then it was like, it was almost like you could feel the gates about to open. And, and it was just like, hold it back, hold it back. Like, and I'm like, get to a place where I, I can't hold it much longer. And <laughs> so like... then I would start messaging her, like, do you feel this? And she's like, oh my God, I'm so in it. And it, like, I would have to like literally at points hold onto the kitchen counter and just like, whoosh, or go sit down outside yeah. and ground. And it, it just, the waves kept coming and it was pure orgasmic bliss. And that happened back and forth. And we would download after that happened. Yeah. And, and it started coming through. Well, and then we started channeling. some of the archetypes of uh, the, the divine feminine, divine masculine started really making and itself clear. of life. So that's when, you know, Hakate was coming through for me mm -hmm. and then Ra was coming through for you. Yes. And so those 
deep, huge, massive archetypical channels were coming through in our own personas and just playing out these connections, this divine masculine feminine connection within our own being and the remembrances. And then after that would happen, then we would message each other and, and remember, remember lifetimes together. And so we started writing all these lifetimes down that we were sacred partners. The light language was just, just <sighs> yeah. Pouring and out. that's the only way we were communicating was with light language. And then afterwards we download everything that happened and try to figure out like, okay, what were we, what is being remembered here? What, why is this coming through? Like, and we would remember so many times of us being um, leaders together and, and like my queen, she's my king, you know, and I, I remember, she remembers me as her queen. And I remember many my lifetimes, priestess, my chief tis. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So, and I've remembered her in all the way back to the Temple of Isis when she was a priest and I was priestess, straight from the lineage of Isis as uh, her and her initiates and teaching this, teaching the tantric energy, teaching the divine masculine union feminine in its highest form, and remembering lifetimes of, as rulers. Um, Queen and King, and Sophia. and uh, <laughs> the softness of Sophia, Isabella. all the names of of our and even galactic memories, you know, of, of times be that Agatha. weren't in embodied. Yes, <laughs> of the and over and over and over again. But we also had to go through the feeling, not only in the remembrances of these lifetimes, but we also had to go through all of the uh, emotions that came up from those lifetimes. And this was, again, and all in Remembering we were losing each other in these lifetimes as well. Remember her passing. I remember her, her funeral. I remember... You know, just oh like you know we would just yeah. be crying and like and we didn't see each other in person for three weeks yeah. in this period of time and I, three weeks. I was seeing her as her chief and me being her chief just and her going off to battle and not knowing whether she's coming back and you know just the memories were so inc and are still so still incredibly really strong. They're, they're as strong as the memories of my children taste, when they're babies. Smell. You know, I mean, memories, all, that moment, jewelry, everything got ripped clothing. off. It was, yeah, that it, it was then that the Akashic Records just went. And what and happened is like. Opened up. Like it was like duct tape. It's like, oh, this is all the this stuff we weren't Duct revealed. tape on the eyelashes, duct tape on the eyebrows, it all got ripped <sighs> off. But we had to like do that year as ceremony partners and 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 develop Just, our connection, our relationship, and our and recognize how we were when we worked together in balance. Yeah, that and and that 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 also helped us balance ourselves to the next level within. And so when all of that, when everything was then revealed, we were already in this place of, of this beautiful balance separately, individually. Um, and, and, and then it just brought it to this whole other level of uh, divine union. Right. So it was just a massive remembrance and through all that, I didn't know how to wrap my head around that. I didn't even know what was happening and let alone how to share that with my then husband, you know, try to explain what's going on. There were triggers on. as well. Triggers as well. Things that made me like, uh, I want to just run the fuck away, <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, the, the past relationship that had, triggered it all you know the remembrances that she had also been married and um 
in the, in that whole the ten years before you're talking about right that re, that ten year before relationship that communication um, and 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 you know I was like this this while we had this super uh, intense connection and relationship and it was very much divinely put in place um I, you know i i was the secret i was the side you know like nothing could really be talked about nothing could be shared and i had to live mm -hmm. in this period of time for a while very secretively and very hidden and yeah she um, showed me she was never do that I was again like, like that's i not... won't do that to myself yeah. again i don't i don't i don't want to be that I don't want to play that. I can't, I can never, no, that is not, I've, I've experienced that and I will never do that again. And I, I'm not going and to. It just like, didn't work out. I mean, like it's not a thing that was pleasurable and, you know, no, and was, I can understand that. And I, I never I expected, know. um, you know, to have feelings like that, that showed up in such a deep way. So then in order to process that, I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll book a session with a counselor, you know, talk, like, who the fuck's going to understand that? You know, like, who do I talk to? So I just, I just kept praying and meditating and asking spirit to please guide me and share with me. And then we got an opportunity to do a festival together, which was in this mall that was vacated, that we took over the whole mall and all kinds of amazing light workers and beautiful people showed up to share their gifts and time and talent. And she was asked to DJ and I was asked to do yoga. And well, and we had a we had just started our full moon, new moon video. Yeah. So we had in Which the winter. Our first we started one doing the was videos. done like on the 27th or 28th of December, like three days or something before the downloads begin before mm -hmm. all of this happened. So, so it's the full moon of December. One video and then, and then, then, all, then the had, had me, all that information came through and then we had to make another video and then it was new moon of, of January, 2021, which was literally a year since we had sat in medicine ceremony. Uh -huh. And that's when we we're going to do our video. And so I told and, and all of this has been going on for like two weeks, three weeks. It was weeks. two or three weeks of this. And it was like and, constant. Like, And we had to see each other in person. Like, okay, how's this going to work? We're going to have to set some boundaries. Like, here's some <laughs> rules. Like, okay, first of all. We don't know no, what's really happening No kissing. There. No. Because I knew that any kind of kiss would break my marital contract. And so it was like, and I, that's not going to happen. I respect she for totally that. respected that. And I was like, okay, um, well, just I'm going to bring the dog. You know, the dogs can play in the yard. We're going to meet in the backyard let the dogs play. And then we'll go in and do our video. And so I came over and we just sat in the swing together and watched the dogs go like yin and yang, round and round and round and round and round and round and play. Black dog, white dog. <laughs> yeah, we have opposite dogs. They've they never a... been able to meet their match until they met each other. <laughs> yeah, they're little... Familiar, that... <laughs> and their energy was just like, <sighs> yeah, all around the yard. They were just literally playing it out, like mm -hmm. they were the external expression of this. <sighs> yeah, the toroidal energy <laughs> yeah, literally was happening. was happening. And so I just sat and just kind of melted into her in the swing, and I was like, "This is just enough." I went back against her, and I was like, "This is, this is great," just to be in her space, you know, and then we went to do the video, um, before the video happened, you know, there was electric shocks and some touching happened and it was like, whoo, okay, okay, okay. Whoa. You know, that's can't cross the line. Can't cross the okay. Line, there's can't massive. Cross the okay. We realized that there was massive electricity there. Okay. It is real. Yeah. It we're is, not making this up. and it's not going to stop. We thought it would just like the downloads would come through and then it would be done. That was a complete, um, that's <laughs> not what happened. That is not <laughs> that's what I what kind happened. of thought. I mean, totally going into this completely ignorant. But we like kind of made out without making out. Yeah. It was like we didn't cross any boundaries, but we were close to one another. But what was it, also the static electricity was, the, was the, like, well, not it wasn't static. Like it was we knew each other so deeply. 
Um, there was a, a, this, a yearning and a missing that I have never felt and a, a need to be close that I have never felt. And it was such a pull and such a draw. It took every ounce of my being to separate and to sit and to record that video and yeah, to of, leave. Looking back on it, when at the video it's itself, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it is funny. It was from January 2021. Where we were. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so then we the were, next we weekend, um, we had an opportunity to do this festival. And so I was going to spend the night with her and do the festival. And I was like, okay, this is a perfect opportunity to, um, to explore whether this is real and absolutely it was real. And so we ended up having three full days together and then, Oh, well, but what about the private mushroom ceremony that we held and received all the, well, that was the next weekend. Wasn't it? That was right. When after, did we that was the Wednesday after the weekend of the of the festival, because then we'd already been together, and we was the first that was okay, okay. the first ceremony that we held Time together. Line. Yeah, the timeline. That's why we're doing this video is for our own recognition as well as what's happening um, in a timeline because it's downloaded so quickly. But the um, the January was a blur, and it was an, a massive amount of information coming through. And so the festival happened and we did our pieces. I taught the yoga, she taught the DJ work, but after we came home, it was just like well, hours and hours and hours of tantric bliss. Well, so we were, the, it was on Saturday and Sunday and she was going to come and spend the night Saturday night, but then you ended up coming and spending the night Friday night. Right. Instead. Yeah. There was a, um, a point in time where I was like, okay, I'm going to just head on out there early. I was telling my then ex husband that I needed to leave and avoid traffic. And I didn't want to go Saturday morning because then I'd have to immediately go to the festival and set up. And it was a trigger. We got in a fight. He said, get the fuck out and go leave. And I'm like, fine, I'll just go now. And so I did. And so we actually ended up having an extra night together before the festival, which was really beautiful and um it wasn't there was no there was rush no, you know like having but to there go. was also no holding back it, it, like you couldn't we couldn't stop it there was no yeah it i mean just, the, the physicality of it was so intense and it was this missing and yearning of being apart for so hundreds, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years crying, that we hadn't crying, been, crying. been embodied together like this was the first time that we'd been embodied together in a very, very, very long time. At least 500. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm it was like, certain, but... I know when we have the memories of, um, of being king and queen, it was 1400s, 1500s. I mean, it's a long, long time ago. And I don't remember any other embodiments when I was with her after that is, until now. Um, but all of them go back. The other ones go back even galactic. Like her name, Treyushaba, comes from being a galactic commander. And I remember being part of that star command. And um, and then she also had voyages that were where she couldn't find me. There was times where I was a, a Valkyrie go way out. in the galactic with my sister. And I had to completely wipe my memory and re not remember her so I could do the missions that I was called to do um, on the galactic level. And so there was so much coming in and we're writing all this down, journaling all this, but to tell you guys about this because it is so very real um, and these memories and this tantric connection started coming through and and the, the way that the energy has moved through us in tantra and the uh, the ability to connect in through all of the gates and then embody and, and shoot out into the cosmos, receive information, light language, mudras, breath work, tantric information um, and light codes, and then embody it back down and, and shoot it down into the earth. And it, it just moves out in this atomic bomb of cosmic bliss and love. And it's, 
charging up the planet. Like it's, it's crazy and incredible. And it sounds like it can't be real, but it is, <laughs> it is very real. real. And so that started happening. And then um, the next week we had held space well, on Wednesday yeah, for a but client. You, but so we had the Friday night, then we did the event on Saturday, which was amazing and so divinely aligned. And we were actually recognized as, as being together in our community from people who hadn't actually met us before, but they knew they saw us as twins. They, they knew, and there were other twins that were witnessing and seeing us and they just knew. They yeah, and so we immediately gravitate toward each other to us and talk about that what we were experiencing was absolutely real. Yeah, and they were experiencing they were it too. It. <laughs> You're right. And they were seeing it all over us. So it was just this like confirmation of like to be seen in that way yeah. that no one knew about any of our previous earthly life and to see us together. Just like, You've always been together. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just been like, yeah, we have. Yeah. And so then 12 hour of bliss yeah it was 12 hours 12 hour session <laughs> amazing. amazing and never experienced anything like that in this body and then um, sunday and then we came home sunday and also i had never been with a woman in this body like that was the other thing too is that it doesn't really matter like how it's all energy yeah it's like crazy amazing and beautiful and so then that Sunday, I still can't explain. No, I mean, just knowing, knowing things about the body and about her body that I would never know. Just, I remember. I just remember. It's crazy remember. and beautiful. And, you know, I'm honored, you know, to have found you again. Same. I really am. And so we, <laughs> we are going to, um, you know, after the Sunday night festival and her DJ set, she literally closed down the show in this beautiful pyramid energy of a, like a four story mall where it has like this glass ceiling and there's palm trees in there. And she's like throwing down this music and or I'm, I'm dancing and there's five led spinners. And I mean, it was like dancing. For, your set was really long. I got really tired. It was, two hours. <laughs> it was two hours of dancing and then came back and I was like, I can't drive. And I was like, so in another dimension, we were in this 5d mall. The whole weekend so and trippy. then the mist and um fog started coming in and we had to drive back to her house in plano i was like i don't know how i'm going to make it back all the way across we were Dallas. exhausted we were exhausted we, had a 12 hour session we didn't even sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so and then did the whole festival you know and then i get a phone call from my daughter and my um, then husband and said don't come home it's foggy and you know don't come home until the next day and i was like wow okay so we're gifted with an evening together to decompress and download and just rolled into her house and i made dinner for the family and they're like oh we never we have dinner by the at grocery the table. store on the way yeah home. Like a grocery <laughs> store. Like, we don't ever have sit down dinners i'm like well this felt so comfortable and so perfect and so we all had a sit down dinner and chilled out and then you know of course um had you had a session the next day with Linda. Oh, and I had, yeah, my Reiki master. So I said, that's the counselor that I chose is my Reiki master. So I was like, okay, the next day I'm going to go talk really to somebody time. who might understand <laughs> on this level. So of course we had another evening together of tantric bliss, but also a morning together to really integrate and talk and just have coffee and, you know, and then I was like, well, I'm going to go see my Reiki master and she also knew her independent of my relationship with her and her, her children even know her, Linda Ball. And she, I said, well, maybe you should come. We should just do this session together and have it kind of like as a couple session. And so we went together and shared everything. And she helped us understand and download and integrate. And uh, so we ended up... Uh, having more recognition than we'd ever had. Mm -hmm. And then it was Monday. Because it was sensitive. It was so very sensitive. And all this information was so absolutely powerful and so overwhelming and so beautiful and so amazing. And so like, 
oh my gosh, like I've, I've been looking for you for so fucking long and uh, here you are. But also here's our scenario is that there, there is a contract, there is a marriage and, 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 and there's a lot of love there and things aren't bad. Yeah, it was never <laughs> and like, bad. Like, and, and, and so much love and respect and honor for her agreements and, 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 and for the family. And, and it, so it was like really sensitive. So it was, you know, it's like, oh my God, this is happening, but oh my God, this is the scenario. And this is super, this is really hard to navigate. Like, what do we do? How do we move through this? Yeah, because this I was is, like, okay, how do I even approach We this? can't not unknow this information and we can't put this back in the box <laughs> right and you know of course well, being together physically you know that breaks all contracts and i was like how am i gonna share what happened i don't want to i don't ever intend to hurt him you know and so trying to figure out that didn't see him monday again because i was in session and came back tuesday was like a regular work day wednesday we had a ceremony set up and private ceremony. so there was a, a woman that was staying in my Airbnb. I uh, went, we were not using the yoga studio. We use it as Airbnb. And so she'd come in, she's a comedian and also an astrologer and a, a um, intuitive astrologer at that. So she yes. offered to do a session for, for us, but also she said that she's, she felt really, she felt the medicine on the land and she'd been in her, uh, in a space where she'd almost had to live in her car. And I was like, you know, you're going to stay at the studio. You're not going to live in your car. She's transitioning from California. And she said, I really want to sit with the medicine. I said, well, why don't we do an exchange where you do a reading for both of our charts at the same time. And then we'll do a ceremony for you, a private ceremony. And so we set up the reading for Sunday, the last day of January. We set up the ceremony for Wednesday, which had been open on my calendar because we both were going to sit with a, a sister and sit with Bufo. And then we were clearly told, no, not to. you're already receiving these heights of information. You don't need to go and utilize this medicine. And you're receiving it through your tantric connection. And so we had this day open and I said, well, what about tomorrow? She said, okay, I'll come and sit tomorrow. So she literally came in and we had not, figured out how we're going to navigate together now that we're tantric partners to hold space as ceremony partners to do business together. You know, like, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? And, and so it ended up as flowing easily as perfectly. Like it always has. Like, yeah. And I saw her, like I held, I hold space for as the divine feminine through ceremony. Um, Durga Ma speaks through me a lot. And you know, I just step out of the way and just share what she's sharing. Sometimes it comes through in light language. Sometimes it comes through as a lecture. Sometimes it comes through as an energetic clearing or um, a shamanic clearing or a soap law or whatever. But um, then she holds space through the divine masculine, through the drum, the ceremonial drum, um, and through uh, the tending the fire and to holding down the container really and so as that was happening, it was indoors, which we always had a fire, but this woman was also an experienced practitioner, so she could talk and navigate through the medicine. So as I was holding space for her as a divine mother um, and her being in this position of a divine daughter, she was holding space as the chief. And I was in this su submissive role to bring her her staff and bring her her, her drum and bring her water and like it felt very comfortable to be in this role that felt very much like a wife and yet still hold this divine strong space as a ceremony holder you know and so as we navigated through that um what was your takeaway like in that i mean it just there was that recognition that she was my wife that um, she had always been my wife and, and just so much honor and respect for the work that she did. And um, just to witness her was, was so amazing. Just so amazing to watch her. <sighs> She's a badass. She's such a <laughs> badass. <laughs> but then there was this, it, it was, 
I don't even know if I can put it into words. It's just so profound. But she was, I was like, kind of like, there's an instrument that I'm needing. And yeah, what is, what is the to thing? Like and I was, I was kind of channeling information through, like speaking in light language. But I also knew that there was something that I needed that I didn't have. And um, my, my staff was kind of in the corner. So where I was sitting, I couldn't actually see it when I turned around. And she got up and, like, and went and grabbed went, it. And, and I didn't and walk it to like me. One walk in front of her, though. Like I went and got the staff, and I would I brought she it. She just came, and then I came like laid it in front of me behind, and then like handed it to you like this, and then I just went back and I handed it to you, just, and she grabs it, and then I go back and I come back and just sit in my spot and hold space again, you know. And it was like I didn't know that was a behavior that was appropriate in the Native American culture. But as I've looked into that, absolutely, the chief just never walks in front of the chief. That is disrespectful, especially when she's, when, when, you know, the chief is holding space. And so like, I never, I didn't, I just did that naturally. It was very interesting as a Western woman to feel that submission and that softness. And more and more so, the softness and the surrender has started coming in and coming in and coming in. But it was honoring and very respectful. And then, but then there was profound honor and respect back to her. For and it wasn't her like her she action. expected it that. Was a, it was a dominating man. Yeah, it was, it was a very different energy. And yeah. it was, it was just a mutual. very pleasing to honor in that way. And I've never felt that in this life and meaning absolutely no disrespect to my ex-husband at all. It's just, I, I hadn't ever felt that energy of complete submission and surrender. And it's the Sophia, the Sophia, the Christ Sophia love, the divine feminine softness that has come through, through this connection that is so beautiful. And so as that happened with that ceremony, then that, um, that after the, she was, was holding so space, she was, it was so confirmational. Um, and then the client went to sleep. I went to go make her, a cro I was making a crock pot full of taco soup and I wanted to make sure that she was fed that night. Um, there was nobody home. Right. And so she and I were in the kitchen together and things got heated and we had our first kiss on the patio and you know so this happened this, this, has, this all... happened before yeah that was the week before you're right it was the week this before. was the wednesday before that so because our timeline it was, got it was a little our, bit it was our first up, kiss this was the wednesday before she came for the weekend actually yeah. not the wednesday after because that was our first that's where we like allowed the kiss to happen mm -hmm. And, and we had been holding it back and holding it back. And finally, it was well, because it was that we can't the new moon. There was the new moon ceremony where there was the rule of no kissing, and then that we were alone. And it just happened. It was a um, it was a moment that was really important and very significant. And you know, it was um, I'll never forget. You know, and it was such a familiarity and such a a purity to it and a recognition and then the passion and fire and energy that happened after that was like incredible like in the freaking movies <laughs> um but then of course it was like breaks they're like okay no this can't happen you know so that didn't nothing happened um and then that weekend together happened where everything was confirmed and everything was like, okay, yes, this is happening in the physical realm. This is not just energetic. This is not just a download this. And now what to do with it. We integrated that with our counselor and Reiki master. And then the next week, a couple days this. later, you know, I was still swirling from the process and like, how am I going to speak to anybody um, about this, let alone, my husband at the time. And then we got invited to a, um, a really contemporary like church service that was with all the people from this tribe 
that we had seen the weekend before at that at the the 5D the mall. 5D mall. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like, okay, what is this? And they're like, well, I mean, a lot of people are getting together, playing music, um, integrating. It's at someone's home at this beautiful loft that's uh, like made out of stone called the Castle Cathedral. And it's a tribe of people that are getting together. And we hold fellowship and someone does some sacred teachings. And then we just hang out and, and integrate and um, we're like, yeah, that sounds amazing. So let's go to this church service. And we, we had, it was the we Friday. We had a video that we had to do on Friday. And then that was Friday evening. And then we were doing what? It was, was a shamanic the, training. The shamanic training. So we were doing a Saturday. shamanic practitioner training on Saturday with a group of women that were coming over to my yoga studio. So it was a busy weekend again, full of work. And then we had the astro reading with that lady on Sunday. On Sunday. Um, so I had to go to the property in order to do our our work, what we had signed up for. So I had to be there, which was like this, like, how do I, like, be so here? Up. And did you come know Friday? all the things that are, yeah, we did our video in the studio. Okay. Yeah. And that video was so the awkward. Moon. That was so awkward. That energy of like trying to maintain our composure being next to each other on video. I mean, you look back at some of those old it's, videos and we're like, oh my God. So <laughs> we're trying to like to create space between us, you know, simultaneously. It was so <laughs> awkward, you know, to actually have to do that. So um, then we went to this party and had an amazing connection with these people and then had an amazing connection together that night and then the next day had the shamanic training <laughs> and <What? laughs> and then um then a lot of women came over we started recording our shamanic training and um, the lady that was doing the astral reading did a recording for us and then sunday morning came and I had went to sleep um, in the master bedroom next to my then husband and got up to make coffee. Um, and it was quite early still. And I was going to go tell her that the coffee was ready because, as we mentioned, coffee is a ritual. And we'd been enjoying it together on video chat. Still coffee. Yeah. In here. There's, finish that off, babe. <laughs> it's dark outside. So um, that's it, the last of it. The mushrooms are at the bottom. But, um, we have a beautiful mushroom blend we got in Hawaii that we put in there. So anyway, I made the coffee and I went to go um, tell her coffee was ready. And she just got this horrifying news that um, just received. About My son had been delivered home by the police that morning. And we're sitting there talking like, what? What actually happened? He and, was like breaking into cars. Yeah, he was doing some stupid shit. The 14 year old. And she's like, then 13. Um, what do I do? Do I leave to go? And um, she's like, my parents brought, or it was your mom who brought him home? No, the police brought him home. Brennan was home. Oh, brother Brennan, was her home. brother was there. So she's like, there's nothing I can really do at this point. And I was like, well, our reading is supposed to happen in an hour. Like she's literally coming over here to do this reading. And it was like, so, do I go? Do I stay? And what? she's like, well, I, I think I should stay and do the reading because we had this exchange for the ceremony for the reading. And I was like, well, let's just go in and make our coffee. So we walk in the house. She's making coffee. I walk in the bedroom and I get bombarded by um, Rich going, what the fuck were you doing? Why were you in the cabin? And I was like, we well, were just talking in the morning. You know, I get ready to have coffee. And he's like, just threw out there to have you kissed her. And I was like, what? Like, can, we don't need to have this conversation right now. Like for real, let's just have coffee. Um, you're, you know, let's create a time and space to talk. I do want to talk to you. And he storms out of the room and sees her making coffee. And um, I don't even know how it went down, but it, it got really ugly and um, yelling you happened. You motherfucker. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah. I remember a dragon coming at me saying, you motherfucker. And I was like, 
So I said, yes, like, I've kissed her. Like, and what? that's when he flew out the door. Like, okay, he, he now knows. And it, you have to understand, we, we weren't trying to hide it I as much as looking. we were trying to figure out like, what the fuck was really happening. Yeah, and, and I wanted to find a time like, and place to approach it, like where we could talk. It's and the, been one week since we had actually been together. had the physical mm -hmm. union occur. There had been all of this build up. We had not seen each other through the first three weeks of it. And then we saw each other like several times over like this two week span and it just kept amplifying. So it was really like this place of like, okay, we have to do this work that we've signed up for and agreed to, but we also like, we, we got to figure out how to maneuver through this. And now it's just happening. Like, it is, it's like, we're not really trying to hide it, but we're trying to figure out how to do it. And yet now no, he's coming no, at me and I know that no. he now knows. And I, I don't know what the conversation was on the other side of the door. I, I don't know what's been discussed. I just have like going like, what? So yeah, I redirected the um, energy and I said, let's, okay. let's just all talk. So give me space. Stop I'm gonna yelling. I'm going to go outside. <laughs> And yeah, and so she goes and just drops into child's pose off the back deck. Okay. And I said, I want to talk to you. Please allow me so, some time to meditate. I want to I want to share what's happening and I need to tell you, but not like this. And so I went down to the water in the space where basically um, you know, we had our ceremonies and I said, do you want to come down and sit by the water with me? And we'll just sit there and meditate and integrate and listen, listen, listen right. to your spirit to tell us and guide us because that had been really what we had been doing this whole time. It's just like spirit guide us, you know, like a surrender, like, please just help show us how to maneuver through this process because you were, you were showing us, and you were putting us together, so therefore you must show us right, how, like to how are we supposed to navigate this? Navigate this whole uh, scenario, this whole process, and 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 spirit did, spirit did. So I mean, we absolutely. went down we, to we, we did not... commune with spirit. Show us how to make it through this part. Yeah, and holy uh, shit. I mean, my mom it's getting really came real. in. Really my real. Down. Um, my mom came in. Um, you have your phone? Here. No, I don't. Um, so she get your phone and we can just um log into the temple Instagram real quick. Um my mom was, you know, just there with me. I was sitting with her and she had crossed over in 2008. Um, and I was just she was like confirming that everything was okay you know, it's okay. Um, this is where you need to be, you know, um, it'll, it'll, it'll work itself out. Just stay calm, stay patient. Um, you know, don't fire back, you know, all that stuff. And then even my, um, Rich's mom came in and she had crossed over a year before and, she was telling me, she gave me um, a hymn. Temple. You know, got to get out of his account. I'm trying right here. <laughs> and so she was, um, she gave me a lyric of an ancient hymn. I'm not hymn. even signed in on Temple right here. Okay. So I don't even know. Okay. So, um, but so just type it in there and. Let's see if you might remember it. Um, she was telling me what was the lyric? It was a uh, it is well, it is well with my soul. All is well with my soul. And so that was the, the verse that kept going over and over and over is it is well, it is well with my soul. And so um that's what happened, is that you know, I just sat with it and she was sitting with it as well and said, okay, I know that everything's going to be okay eventually. How is that going to work out? And just um, so 
we're going to resume recording stop on the next video here I'll tell you what happened at the creek <laughs>